This is the official EFL podcast with Mark Clement. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the official EFL podcast with me, Mark Clement. And always sad when one of the Football League's longest serving managers loses his job. Carl Robinson twice led Oxford United to the Skybet League One playoffs, but a point from a last possible 24 led to his departure. A run the man himself described as as bad as anything he'd had in his career. Of course, there's never a shortage of managers coming back into the game. And in the case of our first guest returning two months ago to familiar surroundings. Being back, going back twice the second time, I didn't think I'd, I'd go back again. And I keep saying that every time I go back, but I generally felt like I, I'm not, I'm not going to go back this time. Because I think partly because I've resigned this time. And if you think life is tough at the top of football, imagine what it's like trying to stay in the EFL. It's going to be a busy and exciting, exciting end to the season one. A challenge, what you know, we all want to step up to. Uh, so it's down to uh, down to us now, really. It's the officially EFL podcast. Let's start this episode in Skybet League One, where the beauty of having the Peterborough United manager Darren Ferguson on is that I can use the same questions I have done several times before. After his third return to London Road at the start of the year, because I always find myself here, Darren, when we get to this point, before I ask you about coming back, I always find myself needing to ask about why you left last time around, because it is on such a regular basis, isn't it, that you're doing this? Yeah, well, it's, it's my fourth time back now. So no, but it's your third return, yeah, your sorry. fourth time. Right. Do you see? Ah, yeah. Well, the f- well, the first two times I got sacked. So yeah, I think you know the reason behind that were probably results based, uh, yeah. but this time was different. This time I left and I resigned, um, which is probably the the sort of question you're asking: Why did I why did I leave last time? Yeah. Well, I think I've explained it a few times now. We I felt that the clubs just wasn't equipped for the championship. Uh, I don't think we, as a club, were. Um, We had obviously got the promotion from League One, uh, which was fantastic. We went into the championship. I mean, it's it's a completely different level, both on and off the pitch, as you know. And I just felt that if you you want to be an established championship club, as the club said they were going to want want it to be, then things had to be different. And listen, I'm not blaming any individuals or any people. It's circumstantial the way the world is as well with the COVID. We took a big hit. So that was the reason I left. I, I felt I'd gone as far as I could with it. And, and, and I felt 15 games to go, I could give someone maybe an opportunity to keep them in the league. Yeah, I get you. <clears throat> this time around is, well, you're definitely put your cards on the table that this is an interim appointment. You've agreed to, in your words, help them out to the end of the season. Yeah, it was... You know, I was 10 months out, having a break, quite enjoying it, doing different things, um, going to see other people work. Um, but then opportunities did come along. There was one or two interviews, there was one or two offers, or more than one or two offers, but none that really excited me. So I felt, well, once you get to January, you think, okay, it might be the summer. And that would probably open more things up. Um, I was looking at, I looked at different things. I looked at, I went to see sporting directors to see how actually, why they pick managers how clubs are run because um, that's something you know that I might might be interested in after managing I can't I'm not going to manage until I'm 70 I'm not I'm not going to do I, I can't see myself doing that so I just wanted to kind of see other things and how clubs actually work and why they pick managers for re- the reasons I want to see Eddie Jones work with, in the rugby and, and just different things away from just the basic football but then Dara Rang got in touch with me through someone else and said, we'd be interested in a conversation. They'd made a, a decision on the manager that they had. So I said, look, I'm, I'm always open to a conversation. But we both made it clear that, look, can you kind of come back and help us out until the until the end of the season? Plus, I think he wants a bit of advice on who perhaps is going to get it full time. And, and we've got a fantastic relationship and perhaps I can help him with that as well. So we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, although... Uh, there's loads we could go out there in that answer you've just given me, but although am I not right in thinking that Dara himself is departing 
at the end of the season? Or did has there been a correction to that? That was, that was how I read it. I think there's been a correction ah. to that. I think he said, as far as I'm, 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 I'm aware, he said he was going to leave it at the end of this season. Yeah. But he's since changed his mind. There's something about that football club, Darren Ferguson, isn't there, that has you all so inextricably linked, which rather leads me to the point of, I wonder how detached you are from the club when you are out. You've left, you, you, you know, you've resigned, as you said, in that last case, but are you, are you constantly looking, seeing how the club's evolving, see which players are still there because it is so entrenched in your heart? No, honestly, this time around, because look, being back, going back twice the second time, I didn't think I'd, I'd go back again. And I keep saying that every time I go back, but I generally felt, look, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go back this time. Because I think partly because I resigned this time. So I didn't have any contact with I never watched them play again. I stayed well away. I, I did do, go and watch a lot of games with never Peterborough. Um, I stayed in touch with Dara because it's more than a chairman manager relationship. We are friends. Uh, you could you definitely call us that. Um, there was once or twice we met for a coffee. We just sort of chewed the fat as, as you speak. But no, I completely detached myself from the club. I obviously still know people there, some good friends that work there, but was never really involved at all and never wanted to get, I, I had no interest to really. I was looking at outside the club and other clubs really. And, and and how much can a club change in a relatively short period of time? I, mean, I was I was looking at signings. There seemed to me to be maybe four permanents, four loans had kind of come in in the period you were away. But when you go back in, do you think, wow, this is this has moved on to a different place very very quickly? No, not really. Um, I don't think it because it, it was only ten months. There's not much yeah. can change too much in 10 months. Obviously, personnel changes. Nothing around the infrastructure of the football club had changed in terms of the training around the stadium, the way the people that worked there. Uh, so it was familiar faces. It was quite seamless going back because I think 10 of the players that had remained was had got promoted when we went last time. And it was just a case of, okay, go in, get your philosophy, get how you want to work in terms of the standards and quality you want on a daily basis and then see what happens. It was, it, it's quite, it's quite, a, it's quite a relaxed, I would say, climb, to be honest. Um, and I think the players are fully aware it's just till the end of the season. That's how they're looking at it as well. Um, and they're fine with that. Yeah. Is there a, is there a danger that the job you have done at Peterborough and been so inextricably linked to the club <clears throat> means that it restricts opportunities elsewhere because I look at your management CV since January 2007 and all the promotions you've had along the way I mean I don't know if you'd agree with me that it, that looks it looks like a pretty good CV to me there aren't too many can claim to have had four promotions in a decade and a half do you agree yeah I, I mean <clears throat> I'm the one for, for blowing my own trumpet as you know but if you sit down and look at the CV just purely yeah. that, plus the development of players would have to go alongside that CV in terms of, I think Peter has made some along the lines of 40 million quid with the development of players. Um, and also at Doncaster, you know, some of the players there we brought in for nothing and sold for big fees. So that's a big part of my, if someone said, look, what, tell me, tell us about what you, how you work. A big part of that is improving players, developing them. Um, alongside the promotions, you would have to say it's a very strong CV. One thing that's always, I don't know if the right words bug me, is when the, the big jobs in League One come along, i.e. The, the Derbys, the Sheffield Wednesdays, it was times it was Sunderland. I never really got mentioned and it, it did surprise me. And I, I don't know what the reason is. I don't know whether it's because I'm so attached to Peter, as you say, I never really thought of it that way. Well, if, if, if you've gone purely on someone that gets a club out of League One, then you would like to think that would be around the mix. Yeah. The, the sorts of clubs you have just mentioned would, would seem to me, having been in around the industry for a couple of decades myself now, to be the next natural 
stepping stone for you. I I don't understand why more people don't love that. You don't you don't think in a you don't think in a strange sort of way. And you know I don't ask you too many gratuitous questions about your old man. Do you think in any way people see that? Not the comparison with your old man, which you've always said you are your self, but do you think there's anything in there that people perceive as extra scrutiny and extra pressure as a result of your, who your old man is or anything like that? Or am I barking um, up a wrong tree? I, I don't know. I don't know whether people think... I mean, look, my old man's 81 now, so yeah. maybe before when I started, people may have thought, oh, is he going to get involved? Which he absolutely never would. I, I don't know is the answer. You know, and I have had time to think about this. I have thought, I wonder why I don't get mentioned for more jobs. And, and I'm realistic to, to believe that it would probably be a good League One club. The championship's not, I've not done great in that, but I think that's circumstantial given the budgets I've had in the championship uh, with the clubs I've been there with. So I, it's a strange one. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I don't put myself out there a, a massive amount. I'm not on Sky every week and I'm not doing this, that and the other every week. So uh, maybe that's something I need to do more of if that gets you a job. I don't know. Um, if it's purely on what I believe it should be on, uh, your previous work, then I would like to think that it's, well, I know it stands up with the best in League One, you know. But maybe Clem football is is... It's quite a fashionable thing and it goes through trends and it's this head coach thing now, uh, young head coaches, not managers. So maybe maybe that's the way the game's going. And I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting a bit old. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and the very fact that you've been spending time with sporting directors yeah. obviously implies that you know that is the direction in which football is going these days. And I guess if it clicks as well, Darren, can be a... God sent to because it it allows the sporting director to say take a certain amount of stuff off the plate of the manager. Although I suppose you would you would also say that Barry Fry has always been working in the background with you as Peterborough, so maybe it's a model you're familiar with. Anyway, I think I am. I think that, that, that you have to go with the sort of times, and you know, I think my strengths are on the grass, developing players, managing players. And I'm 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 okay. I'm at a club that, in, in terms of the recruitment, it's it's not just the manager picks the recruitment. Chairman's heavily involved. Barry's obviously involved. Um, so I'm used to that sort of uh, type of running of a club. And I think that's the way look football is going. You know, the higher up you go as a sporting director, you're obviously involved in the recruitment. But sometimes players come in that I'm not saying you don't know about, but the club buy players for maybe the future, and you're only there for the present. So I'm, I'm used to all that. It's not an issue, but. Yeah, like you know, like you say, it's it, it stands up where the best of them, but it is what it is, I suppose. Because your CV is relatively pretty clean, if you like, there aren't too yeah. many turds on there. Do you also have to be extraordinarily careful, or are you that bit cautious and make sure that any opportunity you would take? You have to stand a chance, so you're not up against it from the start. And there's a lot of clubs out there. Let's be honest, where you're up, you are up against it from the second you set foot in the door. Yeah, I think you've got to be. Is unless you're absolutely desperate for a job and you've been out for God knows how long, I think you can be uh, in a certain way particular about what kind of job you go to. You know, and you can always be wary of 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 if you go in after a manager that's overachieved for example I'm trying to think of a good example like a Paul Warren I, I would say is a good example at Rotherham you go in after him well how much better can Rotherham be Yeah, you know Paul's dis fully deserved to to get the derby job he's similar to myself had three League One promotions uh, good fix doing really well good manager but that's all that's just an example you've got to be sometimes you, you can't do any better than the one that's left a lot of the time it's when people Obviously, the results haven't gone well and you go in and you try and change things quickly. So, yeah, I think there's certain jobs that you probably think, I don't know if that can go any better. And that's not been uh, unambitious. It's just been realistic. And then there's certain jobs that you think, okay, what, what's the project? Is the project that they're going to give you time? 
and I know that's a, a rare word in football, is that is that are they going to let you develop players? Are they going to let you have three windows, for example? Um, but football changes so quickly because the, the truth of the matter is, if you have a bad month, you're under pressure. That's just the way it is, ninety percent of the time. Um, so that's that. That is the way the business is at the moment. I'm I'm curious as to how you feel you've evolved over a period of time and, and kind of your management career is, is a little bit paralleled my broadcast career. I can remember where I was. I was broadcasting from the Keep Moat Stadium when you got the Peterborough job the first mm-hmm. time around. I remember it breaking. It was a bit of a shock for us all at the time because you'd obviously played your 300 plus games for Wrexham. I was there at Hereford when you got your first promotion. Yeah. You came to see me live on Five Live. Uh, where else was I? I was there when you came back for your first time. Your first game was away at Brighton at the With Dean Stadium. Yeah. I was lying yeah. in wait for you. I was there at Old Trafford for the playoff win against Huddersfield Town. How how have you evolved over that period of time? How have you changed as a person? Um, yeah, quite a bit from when I first started, I would have to say. Uh, probably a lot more methodical. Uh, I've probably done it the, the reverse way as as most managers would. So when I started managing, I didn't do as much coaching as I do now. Whereas it's normally the other way around, if you know what I mean. So I'd only sort of infant steps uh, as a coach when I first got the Peterborough job. I'd done all my badges. I'd been on managers courses, things like that. I'd been doing that since I've been about twenty eight, but. I got the job at 34, so to be to, to get what you want to deliver over as a coach, you have to be confident, you have to have belief. And, and I had Kevin Russell, who was a fantastic assistant for me. He did more of the coaching. When I went to Preston, I started doing more of the coaching. When I left Preston and came back to Peterborough the first time, I, I, that's when I really was a lot more astute tactically. And it's a big part of how I manage now, the work on the grass. So um, that's probably changed quite a bit. Uh, but probably a, a, the wrong way around, if you know what I mean. Whereas managers, as they go on, probably do less coaching. Uh, probably delegate a bit more now. I know and that, that was definitely one of the things that I got wrong in my last time at Peter in the Championship. Um, I didn't have enough staff around me. I, I was doing far too much. Uh, I would openly admit to that. So, But yeah, and, and probably mellowed a bit, Clem, you know, and... And, and getting a better understanding of of what players need is is probably key. You know, sometimes when you're younger, you, you'll just say things or get angry for the sake of it. But now it's the way I'm now is like last night we drew nil nil and I was full of praise for the players because we'd had ten men for half a game and. Uh, you just the, the the players need so much help these days because it's not we've got quite a young squad, and I think the most important thing for me now is they're actually human beings. They're not just robots and footballers, and they've got feelings, they've got emotions. Some can take <laughs> and some can, not but as a group, they need help. You know, I'll go back to the Peterborough time when I left it just came apart a little bit. I could tell that it just came apart. There was, it got not personal, but it got, it just wasn't working anymore. Yeah. And you know, and I just knew that they weren't taking in what I was telling them, maybe confidence or whatever. But I think as a manager, you have to know that players need help. And that's at all levels. They need help mentally, physically, they need help in terms of training. They need one-on-one meetings. They, they, they need a lot. It, 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 like when I when I first when I went back to Peter, the first thing I said to the players was, "Look, every day you need to take something out of every day. You can't just come in and train and go home and play on your Xboxes. You need to get in and you need to learn something every single day because this is your this is your trade. And I'm a, a big believer in the the way that training is and the sort of discipline in that every day. It's a real a real thing with me in, in terms with the players." But you also 
said getting to know the individuals too and that can be a great joy as you get older as well can't it you learn that people's backstory can often be very different to what you anticipated and maybe something's manifesting itself on a football field as a result of something that's going on in a background a player splitting up with his girlfriend he's got a grandparent that's um heading towards the end of their life or whatever it is you know the players always have stuff going on and I guess a manager tries to help them. Didn't your old man used to do that for all, for all the reputation as for the hairdryer? He also used to, I think, know the nooks and crannies to try and help players that were in, in need. Yeah, it's, it's, it's vitally important that you get to know the players, but they also get to know you and, and they also know that they can come to you anytime. I think that's hugely important. And players knowing that, that they can come to you. Right? And I'm not talking about football situations. I'm, the amount of stories I could tell you about people and different stories they've told me and problems they've had. And, you know, I think that's that's really key to how you manage players. Um, and, and that's something I really make sure the players are aware of. Uh, like you come back to my dad, he was, he was brilliant in that, brilliant man manager, you know, and it's probably rubbed off on me in terms of getting that relationship with players. We had a, a uh, 09, 08, uh, 08, 09 reunion on Friday night with the players that had got promotion. And all nine players are there. I keep in touch with them, you know, and it's like, it was like we had met them yesterday, you know, it's, we still have that relationship. Um, and I think that's really important that players have had, uh, I can still have a relationship now. And I think that tells a lot about how, how that relation was bonded, you know. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's a few general issues that I wanted to discuss with you regarding management. I mean, I've got some, I've got the stats here as far as I can work out for the season of the 72 EFL clubs, 32 clubs have changed their manager so far this season. Seven have done it twice, four of whom are in the championship. I mean, that tells you a lot about the short termism of the of the game that you're in, does it not? I, I mean, it's it's alarming, really. It's it, it's crazy stats. Um, I think I would like to see stronger, stronger ownership, stronger people, a bit stronger, right up the top. You know, changing all the time, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. Um, I think you've got to be strong. I think I'm hoping that Chelsea stick with Graham in terms of you would respect that so much if they just said no no matter I don't know, I'm not saying listen they do what they do but I think that would be a great message to we're going to stick by him we're, we're going to you know regardless of the results we're going to give him a right chance um but it just doesn't happen anymore it, it's just I think it comes to for me personally it becomes you've got oh, so much social media you've got Everyone reading that, I don't read it, but you know, owners maybe reading it, and it's so much criticism can go on there. And I think what happens in football is there'll be a manager that's maybe gone through a bad period and he'll get all the stick, and then it'll turn to the owners, well, are you going to sack him? And that's when changes are made. That's when it, when the pressure becomes on them, I think that's when it's changes are made. If it's on the manager and they can handle that, then fine. But when it gets turned on to them, I think the, the pressure's too much. But the stat you've just given me is ridiculous. I mean, it's it, there's no other industry like it. There isn't. I love, yeah, but but playing devil's advocate, I suppose Chelsea would have the resources, and all right, they might not achieve Champions League status uh, or Champions League qualification this season, but at least they've got that comfort. I suppose some some people would argue, you know, if you're near the bottom of the championship and you think somebody might come in and give you a quick flush. Uh, and a bit of a points boost it could be the difference between having the re revenue and resources of the championship next season or League One. And I mean, Carl Robinson has gone this week, a thoroughly decent guy, but I guess he would know that one point from a last possible 24 is not going to be a comfortable situation for him to try and maintain his job. Uh, you'd be the first to agree. You know, Carl's a good guy and he... And he I think he's been at five years at Oxford, and he's been yeah. he's been in the, a manager a long time because he became a manager very young, and he's got a, a good CV, um, <clears throat> and he'll come back again, you know. And 
It, 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 I'll be honest, Clem, it depends on the circumstances. So if you've got a manager that's been at a club for, say, two years and, it all, and he's done well and he's met expectations, so say the expectations of championship, just keep us in the league. And then all of a sudden you get to February and March and it's a horrendous run and you can think, well, any, any more of this and we're going to go down. And the financial implications are huge. I get that. And then you think, do you know what? We might just get a, a quick turnaround and we might win the next couple of games and might keep us in the league. So we'll get rid of him and we'll hire him until the end of the season. I, I totally understand that because the expectations have not been met. If you're going to appoint a manager and I say appoint you in June, I give you a window and October sack you, I don't think that's right. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I think the responsibility would be on the people that recruit the manager. They've got it wrong. That's the difference. And I, that's where I think it's wrong for managers to be sacked in such a short space of time. I totally get your point that if you're in the premiership and there's 300 million that you're going to lose financially and you think coach X can actually keep us in the league, we've got to make the change. That's slightly different. Hiring someone in June, firing them in October is completely wrong. It has to be. You know, in other industries, you would probably say, right, you have a week off and go and learn what you need to learn and come back. But you can't do that in football. You know, there is, it is the only industry like it where you can't go and sort of have a week off and go and learn something that you need to learn and then come back, if you know what I mean. So it, it, it's, it's a crazy industry, but you've got to go into it with your eyes wide open. That's why I know I think any manager is about a month away from getting sacked. Mm. I, it, it's I, I I know it Mark Hughes this week. I don't know if you saw this, but it's the one on it's the first anniversary of him taking the Bradford City job. He says uh, some managers are too precious about reputational damage. More should do what he has done. Uh, he says I've been guilty in the past of overlooking roles below the Premier League or the Championship, and obviously talking about the fact that he's enjoying life at Bradford City. Do you think? Do you think managers do have perceptions of themselves themselves that should be they they should alter and be a bit more flexible and try their hand at different levels if they're not getting the opportunities a bit further up? I, sh I should stress it's easy for Mark to say he's enjoying life at Bradford City. He's won four of the last five, but in general essence, should people spread their wings a bit more? I think so. I, I totally understand Mark's point. Um, you know, and, and like I say, when I was when I was. In my break, I was I was open to any offers, you know, and, and it could have been at any level, um, as long as it's the right project and the right thing to get into. You know, Mark's gone to a really good club there, you know, and everyone I would say would be surprised when when Sparky went to Bradford. Everyone was thinking, "Whoa, where's that come from?" Yeah. Well, you know, that's a club that can really take off. And Mark's experience as a manager has been way above that level. But he's probably looked at it and thought, well, it's a challenge. It's a different type of challenge for him. Um, not many, I agree with him, not many managers that have his profile and worked at the level he has would probably have taken that job. But he's probably looked at it and thought, well, it's just a completely different challenge for me. And, he, and he's doing a great job. And it would be great to see Mark get Bradford promoted and then go again because they've got the finances. Well, they've definitely got the fan base. Um, to have a right go, it would be it would be a great story, and and I think that's how he's looked at that challenge. Um, and there's other clubs out there. I mean, you look at clubs in even the national league now, the Notts Counties, the Wrexhams, and the big big clubs. These and and I, and I agree that you can get a bit snobby with, oh, well, I'm not going to take that job because it's not at a certain level. Me certainly was open to anything when if you know anyone wants to have a conversation, regardless of the level, I think it's right to speak to them, just to yeah. see exactly what. You just never know what they're going to say to you in terms of what they want to do with a football club. Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, you just mentioned Wrexham and Notts County who swapped places this week at the top yeah. of the, the National League. I mean, there's an exciting project, your former club. You must have been following that with interest, haven't you? And all the uh, behind-the-scenes access, all areas, documentaries and all the rest. Who would have thought that Wrexham would be engulfed by this frenzy of Hollywood? Yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting story and obviously it's not ended yet. It's, uh, that's a good club, Wrexham. Even when I was playing there, the, you know, we're going for promotions, we're getting nine, ten thousands, great fan base, obviously been taken over um, by high profile people with clearly a bit of money. 
uh, and and they're going to have a go, you know. And it, I would really love if if Phil got them up. And and that do you know what? That's that's another, going back to managers. There's a good example. They could easily have got rid of Phil, you know, and they stuck by him because he didn't get promoted last season. They stuck by him. He's he's looks like he's going to get them promoted this time, hopefully. Um, so it's a good example of actually being strong and sticking with your manager. Um, but that's a great club. And, and obviously the, the development that's going on, the building a new corp, um, <clears throat> that could definitely go places because they have got the fan base. Well, the place it could go is back into the EFL next yeah. season after such a long gap. Your Skybet League One fixtures this coming weekend. Early kickoff for Morecambe, who've lifted themselves just outside the relegation places. Uh, they are at home to fourth place. Bolton, Accrington, Stanley against Forest Green is 21st against 24th. Barnsley in six. Six wins out of seven travel to Bristol Rovers. Fifth place, Derby County at home to Shrewsbury. Ipswich in third. Back-to-back wins for the first time since October. They entertain resurgent Burton Albion. Managerless, as we record this week's episode of the official EFL podcast, Oxford United. They're at Lincoln. Second place, Plymouth at home to Charlton. Wickham are uh, six points off the playoffs now in seventh. They entertain Exeter City and the leaders, Sheffield Wednesday, having set that new club record for um, unbeaten run, entertain Darren's Peterborough United. Do we just have to marvel, Darren, at some of the form that the teams above you have shown this season? Uh, some blistering <laughs> momentum there. Yeah, it's, I mean, they're, they're pretty relentless, if I'm going to be honest. Um, when I came back, I looked at, I think we had 22 games left, and I thought, well, you, you kind of take off how many th- wins you think you need, and you probably base it on the average of, because we're not going to get top two, we're never going to get top two, on the average of points for the playoffs. So came back, we won our first three, felt we had to win our, the games that we had, the, the way it turned out, we had to win those. And then, we haven't made a point on the playoffs. We, we haven't got anywhere close, anywhere any near closer because they kept winning. So you think, okay, that can't last forever. Uh, we'd won five at the first seven. Obviously, a draw last night, and you know, last night was an opportunity to get a bit of ground on them, but we only drew. So, but the one thing's guaranteed, Clem, it's not going to continue. It's impossible because they've all got to play each other. Yeah. So we have to just do our bit, but you have to say. The points total I had in my mind when I first came back has changed because of the form of the teams above us. So we're going to have to really go some. Uh, you know, you would think Sheffield Wednesday are, are, are a right good chance of getting in the top two. Um, but with that, with the third of the season to go, I think it's a good thing that it's so close with the third and the fourth and, because there's pressure then. You know, it's how they, that's a different kind of pressure now because. You have got big, big clubs in there. You know, Ipswich expected to go up. Derby expected to go up. Sheffield Wednesday expected to go up. They, they all can't go up. Well, those three, if they play off yet, you've got Plymouth, who Stephen's done an amazing job there, and they've got a really good squad. Bolton, another one you would say expected to be around it, given the finances. So a lot of pressure on these teams, and, and points will be dropped. Looking after my own team, we've got to do something that hasn't happened so much this season and beat all those teams around us, above us. We started well with Plymouth, we beat them on Saturday. Now we've got to go to Sheffield and get a result because if we don't do that, we're not going to get in the playoffs. Uh, final question. I've just got to ask you, I know you, you you already said on here how much you, you were enjoying your time out. It always feels like a hell of a gear change when a manager has had, I don't mean gear as in dodgy gear, Hmm. I mean, gear as in a gear change yeah. on your bicycle or in your car. From from having complete freedom to sit down when you want to, read whatever you want to do, go off and do whatever you want to do, to the routine, rhythm, discipline of football. Is it? Do, and and have the, has there been any moment where you've thought for a moment, oh, blimey, what have I done this to myself for? I could be having a nice cup of coffee and just not being so to speak, under pressure? No, because I think I think I was due a longer break because since I've been 16, it's been nothing really 
about football. So, you know, uh, that, that's a fairly long time. I mean, I've had smaller breaks in between my management career, but playing to 34, managing from 34 to now, so there's 17 years, you've probably seen you've had maybe a year's break with all the different ones combined. So I felt this time that I really needed it and to sort of, just for myself. But within that, after the first four, I would say four months, I didn't do much because it obviously it coincided with the summer, so there was no games on. Um, and then I started doing bits of work every day or as much as I could, just watching games, watching players, getting lists of players. Uh, so I, I just kept my eye in, going to games, going to see people work. I, I made sure I wasn't just sat in the lounge watching telly because I thought I've got to get my mind back to working to be prepared for the next job. Um, so a lot of that was in it. And and I enjoy going to watch other people work and, and different types of people, as I've explained. So made sure that I was ready. Didn't think it would be Peterborough, obviously. Um, and, and, and as a manager, you have to keep an eye on what's going on. So unfortunately, other managers are under pressure. So you, you can see that happening with the results. So you kind of say, well, I wonder if I'd be interested in, in that team. Uh, and and if that's the case, you're going to analyse the team. If someone phoned me tomorrow and said, right, we want an interview, you have to be ready. And there's teams that I've done that with, I'm not going to say who, but there's teams that I've thought, you have to do it, you have to be prepared. So there's teams that I know all the strengths and weaknesses of. If someone phoned me up and said, right, we want an interview for, for the job, you've got to be ready. There's, there's others you don't have to be bothered about because you're not interested. So... I think a lot of preparation has to go into even when I was having a break. But yeah, I enjoyed it, and you know, and it, it's totally different. Don't get me wrong; there's no pressure. You can you can sit in your your office and work, but then you can get up twenty minutes later and think, "Well, I'm not bothered today." But it is totally different. But I love I love it. I, I absolutely love it. If I didn't, I wouldn't do it. I, I simply wouldn't do it. You know. But I do love I love the 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 challenge of of being a manager and trying to be successful. I love talking to you. Look <laughs> forward to seeing how the next part of the journey unfolds. Thanks for talking to us on the Official EFL Podcast. Cheers. Take care, Clem. Thanks, mate. The Official EFL Podcast with Mark Clement. From the top of Sky Bet League One to the fight to stay in the Football League, where, of course, every point is precious, like the one that Hartlepool United picked up last weekend, courtesy of Connor Jennings' 92nd minute equaliser against Walsall, his first goal for the club. Have you not had enough challenges over the last few years without taking this one on, Connor? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's certainly a challenge, uh, but it's one, it's one I couldn't really turn down, uh, and one I'm, you know, thankful to get the opportunity of. Um, certainly, yeah, certainly challenging, like you said. I wonder how the pressure compares to the battles you've had quite recently at the other ends of tables, i.e. with your promotion campaigns with Tranmere and with yeah. Stockport. Is it is it different? Yeah, it's different. You know, obviously, um, you know, different end of the table, um, you know, lower confidence, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's different. Um, but hopefully here to bring in a bit of experience and a bit of positivity um, and sort of try and change their sort of mindset mindset uh, of what's happened, you know, in the first half of the season. I mean, obviously, if you're going for a promotion, there's, it, it's benefit time, isn't it? It's you're getting better from where you are. Yep. But the thought of something being taken away, particularly at a football club, where, as you'll be aware, four years in the non-leagues before this is the second season back. Do you, do you and the boys carry that with you as you go out on the field, an awareness of the potential consequences for loads and loads of people? Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, it's not just the football uh, side of it. It's the, you know, the other sides, so, you know, as, in terms of jobs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult because obviously some of the lads here, you know, worked so hard to in the non-league days to get out into, into the football league. And then for, you know, for that to go down, all that hard work to go down the pan, you know, it is, it's not a nice thought. So, um, yeah, we're, we're certainly trying our best to um, keep fighting right to the end. 
Well, you're one of those, aren't you? I mean, let's be perfectly frank. I mean, you've had you've had uh, more league times of late, but you're one of the ones that's for. In, in the, I was going to use a cami phrase there. <laughs> fought like a beaver. What you fought? I mean, you fought and fought and fought to get yourself into the league. So the last thing you want to be doing is skedaddling out the other way. Yeah, of course. Um, obviously, and obviously, the club gave me a, a really good opportunity to come come play for the club. So uh, yeah, I'm certainly giving giving that everything I can in every single game and hoping hoping to pick up a, a few more points uh, before the end of the season. I I counted since last summer at Hartlepool, or Hartlepools as I shall call them, going way back in the day, 28 players coming in. That's permanents and loans. Yeah. I mean, and your squad looks big on paper with all the appearances. I mean, yeah. are we talking three, 11 aside, three or seven 11 aside teams at training? Are we talking those kind of numbers? Um, How the hell does that work? Yeah, it's a, it's a really big squad. Um, I, think, I think we've got quite a few injuries. So that brings it down to two two elevens, um, but yeah, it's a really big squad. Um, I'm sure it's a bit of a headache for a manager to pick a team, and there's so many uh, so many players. Um, but um, yeah, we're we're certainly doing our best. No, I get that. I'm thinking you might with the change of manager last week, when you had that loan spell at Mac, did you overlap with John Askey? Am I right in thinking for those few games? Uh, we'll be back in 2018, I think you were there. Yes, and then that was my second spell. I think I was, I don't know what year it was. I went on loan for my first first spell from St- Scunthorpe. So I've had him before yes. then. So, uh, yeah, we've done, okay. we done really well uh, in that season, to be fair. Uh, yeah. A bit of a goal-scoring form, so I'm hoping to sort of carry that on from uh, from last time, really. So, come on, and, and this is for the benefit of Hartlepool United fans as well. What When he got you all together for the first time, he's taken over. Sadly, things didn't work, work out for Keith Cole. What what kind of stuff is he saying to you that first 10 minutes you all spend in the meeting room with him? Yeah, this is John Askey, I'm talking. Yeah, just, just talking what, you know, what sort of needs to change. Obviously, it was a bit difficult because it was a Friday, day before game. So, it, you couldn't really go into too much sort of detail. You know, he just wanted a sort of reaction. Um for the Saturday, uh, but the last few days we've had, we've been in working on stuff on the training training ground. So hopefully, hopefully that will go on to uh, onto the pitch on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, listen, certainly a fighting spirit to be two goals down as we hit the ninetieth minute. Bearing in mind what you've been through, and for anybody that's forgotten, you did have this rare type of bone cancer had to have a big operation to remove a tumour on your shoulder I know you've scored goals in the year and a quarter since you returned from your illness Connor but is there still that sense when that ball hits the back of the net is it extra enhancement as a result of what you've been through yeah obviously I just try and enjoy the game as much as I can Uh, you know it's, you you know you always hear as a young player you know play play the game as if it's your last and you know stuff uh, stuff like that and I certainly try and uh, try and do that now I've got a bit older and obviously what I've been through uh, so yeah to, to score a nice uh, equalise on Saturday to get us a point you know that meant that meant the world to me um, and it shows we have got the fighting spirit um, that we have and we've shown the last few weeks. When we have been, you know, a few goals down, we just need to go that next step and try and get the three points to be uh, more beneficial. Yeah, you're looking great. How are you feeling? Yes, uh, finally, finally, we're up to speed with everything. Obviously, you know, you always think it'll just happen overnight. You know, get back and everything's fine. But uh, yeah, it probably took a bit longer than I thought. Uh, but yeah, finally feeling sort of back to my old self. So uh, yeah, really happy, happy so far, and then enjoying my time there. Yeah. Do you 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 know in the area where you had your illness? Do, do does it play on your mind, or are you past that stage? The thought that you know, obviously, you were in discomfort as a result of a fall. You had an MRI scan, etc., yeah. etc. Et do you 
do you feel vulnerable? We have to be careful here, mate, yeah. don't we? We don't want to be giving the opp- we don't want to be giving opponents <laughs> the, any sort of. Uh, I'm going to have to say no now, aren't I? <laughs> well, yeah, but you are, aren't you? I've got a, I've, I've answered me on. You know what no, I'm no, saying. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm really fortunate to get over that mentally straight away. To be fair, um, I think my first training session, I slipped, fell on it. It was a big 10 second hold from everyone training and I got up and I think I sort of need, sometimes you need that. And I was lucky to get that in my first training session back. And uh, yeah, to be fair, I've never really thought about it since. Uh, unless I'm changing nappies or having to do a job at home, you know, then I sort of play on it a bit. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, football wise, everything's, everything's all right. Yeah. Well, that was that was one of the things, wasn't it? When you were going through your recuperation, you did have, uh, is it a boy or a girl? A I boy, can't remember. A boy. A little boy. boy. Yeah. And yeah, yeah you, that was one of the most heart-rendering things. I remember reading your story at the time was you couldn't, you yeah. couldn't pick him up and hold him and hug him. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do that for a good number of months. And um, yeah, it was, you know, it was a really difficult time. Um, but yeah. He certainly makes up for it now. Keeps me busy. Yeah. Do you, do you, I don't mean bonus time from a life perspective, but bonus time from a career perspective. Did you worry at one stage when you were going through your illness that moments like the one you experienced with pools on Saturday might not return? Yeah, 100%. I'm I'm pretty, you know, 90% sure that I wasn't going to, you know, play football again. And it probably, even even to the operation, uh, I was I wasn't sure what I was going to wake up with in terms of uh, surgery wise. Um, so yeah, when I woke up from the surgery, you know that when that's when I sort of got the good news uh, that I, there is a chance. But then obviously I've still got to do all the rehab and sort of go through it and test it. And um, you know I'm so fortunate to be able to you know play football now because. Obviously, Anderson at Bristol, Bristol City, <clears throat> you know, he's going through something sure. really similar and, you know, he's had some really bad luck in terms of that. So, you know, in my in my story, I've been so lucky and fortunate uh, where, unfortunately, it's not always always a good, good ending, really. Has it got you focusing on what you might do when you're playing days... Are, are over that thought that you might not have been able to play and might not have been able to provide for your yeah. son and have to look at the future because I'm guessing with the career you've had where you've risen from non-leagues but maybe dropped back a wee yeah. bit even this season you had your period at altering and yeah. back in national leagues I'm guessing you've done all right for yourself but not you're not sitting on 47 yeah. castles with big moats and crocodiles around. No, you. unfortunately not. Uh, yeah, it certainly, certainly does. It gives you both, you know, you want to enjoy it, enjoy it while, you know, while it lasts, you know, because you, you never do know when it's going to end. But, you know, you certainly got to, you got to look to the future as well. And, you know, I've, you know, probably fortunate. I've been told, you know, two or three times that I probably might not play football again. So uh, I keep writing these doctors off, um, but that will soon uh, come come to an end, and uh, you know I will have to retire. So, but yeah, it's a while. It's a while off, yeah. mate. I didn't mean imminently, no, but no, I guess a moment you. out makes you you start to think about it and think, what will I do if I can't play or when I can't yeah. play football? Yeah, what will you do? Have you have you got yeah, have you started fair, to do badges? I've got my coaching or? badges and stuff like that. Um, so, you know a few different things I could sort of go down. Um, so we'll have to see, uh, I'll have to see when that, uh, when that time comes really. Yeah. I just realized you referred to doctors there. You did have that bout of meningitis as well at Tranmere, didn't you? You've had your money's worth out of the NHS <laughs> on, haven't you? I have. Hey. I think the clubs are happy that it's all been on the NHS. Um, <laughs> I would have bankrupt them all, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've had a, I've had a few things. It's, it's life, it's football, it's whatever whatever life throws at you. You sort of just got to get over it and uh, attack it in, in the most positive way you can. Um, you know, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You got to, you know, you got to crack on with it and uh, try and do it with a smile. Yeah. 
which you certainly have. Your Sky Bet League Two fixtures this coming weekend then, folks. These are all three o'clock Saturday afternoon. Sixth place, Bradford. Four wins out of five. First anniversary of Mark Hughes' appointment. They entertain Colchester. Third place, Carlisle are at home to Grimsby. The leaders late in Orient. They are at home to Swindon. Fourth place, Northampton. Still a little bit out of sorts. They've got Crawley. Stevenage in second. Picked up a win after a couple of defeats. Go to Rochdale. Seventh place, Salford, they entertain Newport. Fifth place, Stockport County. Just looking at Connor there for a second. They've got Doncaster in. There is the small matter, Connor Jennings, of you heading back to Tranmere, which, I mean, it was certainly the most successful period for you on the field. Was it not yeah. part of that double promotion winning? Team? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a special club for me. Um, I certainly had a very enjoyable few a good few years, I think four four years. Um, you know, played quite a few games for him, and obviously back to back, back to back promotions, which was probably the the biggest thing um, and the most enjoyable thing. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice to go back to back to Tranmere, uh, see a few old faces. Uh, but I think uh, it will certainly be business, uh, not pleasure, because uh, yeah. you know we've got. We've got three points to pick up, so uh, yeah, be important, important day for us. Well, listen, you, you, you're a big boy. You can take this. You've got a lot of work on, haven't you? Two points above the relegation zone, but you've played three games more than the team just below you. And I have looked through your running. I don't know whether you have Connor. Are you, you've got Bradford coming up, Leighton Orient, Swindon, Stevenage, Salford. A huge game. Uh, which is two weeks before the end of the season at home to Crawley, who are just below you. Yeah. And you'll have no doubt seen who you play on the final yes, weekend I certainly have. of the season. Do you want to say the name or shall we just let people look it I'll up? I guess they, I'll guess, uh, I guess they can guess. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, listen, you, you're going to have to, you, you are going to have to find some form, are you not, to, yeah, to survive? Yeah, of course. Um, really massive, massive 12 games or so. Yeah. Um, and it's certainly, certainly crunch time. Um, obviously, the pressure is on. Um, you know, we've got to fight, fight for this club to stay in the football league. And um, you know, if if we do, you know, it is a tough running. Uh, but you know, if we do beat teams who we got, then we certainly do deserve to, certainly do deserve to sort of stay in the league. So um, yeah, it's going to be a busy and exciting. Exciting end to the season. One, a challenge. What you know, we all want to step up to. Uh, so it's down to uh, down to us now, really. Give it the Connor Jennings fighting spirit that served you so brilliantly over the last few years. Great to talk to you, Connor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to good to see you again. Pools fans, you were one of the clubs that I used to talk about when I first started my broadcasting career. I have got everything crossed for you. Your Skybet Championship fixtures this coming weekend. Friday night, West Brom in 11, six points off the playoffs. They travel to Hull. Your game of the weekend is arguably your early kickoff. That is fourth place Blackburn against second place Sheffield United. Blackburn have won their last three in the league and of course that big FA Cup win at Leicester City. We've got the seven derby as Cardiff City take on Bristol City. Burnley it's now two league defeats in 34 matches they go to Blackpool sixth place Lutner at home to Swansea third place Middlesbrough entertain Reading Millwall against Norwich is 57th Gareth Ainsworth looks for his first QPR win at Rotherham and a big old game at the bottom as well bottom club Wigan entertain Birmingham who are in wretched form lost their last four and nine of their last 11. There are a few fixtures on Tuesday night as well, as there are in Sky Bets League 1 and 2. Also, that is it for this episode. A big thank you to Connor Jennings and to Darren Ferguson. If you've enjoyed it, then please do give us a five-star rating. Press the subscribe button and share on your socials. If you'd like to get in touch, our email address is podcast at efl.com. That's podcast at efl.com. R.I.P. Motti. I'm Mark Clement. Join us again soon for another episode of The Official EFL Podcast.